Okay, thanks again for staying with us on the program this morning on ITV. Lovely, lovely, lovely Monday morning. Okay, we'll go straight to our talking points on the show on our countdown to Edo 2020. We're looking at innovative governance and meeting the challenges of modern era. And that's one major talking point uh, as far as Edo 2020 is concerned. People are saying, well, we need to move away from the past, the style, the structures, the strategies of doing things in the past, we need to move away from all of that and bring new innovations on board to change the narratives, to change things and make life more meaningful for Edo people. Some say with the present administration that has been achieved. Others say it is just uh, business as usual. Whatever side of the divide you belong to, you have the opportunity to express yourself today, beginning with our panelists in the studio. Let me thank very specially Pastor Collins O'Connor for finding time to join us on the show. Pastor Collins, many thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. We also have with us in the studio a lecturer and a public affairs commentator. I'd like to thank very specially Professor Benson Osadoro for joining us on the program. Thank you so much. It's nice being here today. Okay. Let, let, let me start with Pro because you are in the academia. What is innovation and uh, if we extrapolate that a little bit what is innovative governance in your perspective well um, the whole concept of innovative governance is to introduce technology and data to drive governance so in other words when we talk about good governance it's not the way in the kind of old manner of running government that we should not run government um, what information is available to government to decide on certain policies, to make certain decisions, to advance the interests of the people in terms of the resources available to it. So all of this will come through data collection. And the only way you can do it credibly is to advance technology. And so when we talk about technology and data-driven governance, we are looking at a situation where you don't carry too many files. You go to an office, you see a table that is piled with so many files, and somebody is going through it every day. Perhaps in the next six months, a particular firm will not be treated. But with technology, within hours, you have addressed a particular issue. And of course, it is convenient for everybody. It's convenient for the, those in government. It's convenient for those who are to be governed. But this cannot be achieved, except you go through reforms. That is the most important thing about uh, technology and data-driven governance. Okay. You must go through reforms. Okay. The reform process yeah. is very critical to achieving results when we talk about technology and data-driven governance. All right, uh, Pastor Collins. Uh, the, the talks along the lines that one of the major uh, uh, impacts of the present administration is to bring innovation to governance. And that is why, for example, uh, a lot of things that were associated with the state in the past, they're more or less gone into oblivion. For example, the structures and strategies of revenue collection. What are your thoughts? Okay, I would um, thank you for the question. I would um, say that um, in terms of innovation, what we have had from this government uh, particularly uh, is just a whole bunch of um, scams. Hmm? And I'm going to elaborate. Okay. Now, now um, when they talk about the fact that uh, oh, from, for revenue collection, uh, in the past, Agberos used to collect the revenues from the market, and now every or every couple comes into government coffers. Now you would think that because of that, the government revenue would have uh, tripled or quadrupled. Now, what's the increase that the government has had uh, on account of ensuring that all every couple comes into government coffers by reason of um, uh, technological innovations? How much? You are going to find that it's not above more than a hundred million naira, okay? And, and, and then the whole idea of saying that Agberos have been collecting the money meant for the state. Yes, I agree that, you know, we should not allow 
uh, public money go into private pockets. Okay, but in the in the present uh, situation, we find out we're just talking about a scam. It's like the um, so-called refinery that the government says belongs to a do state government, which is very far from the truth. I, 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 when, you, when you listen to these things, you, they, they are very laughable because that, that project belongs to a Chinese company. Okay, but I want, I want you to stay on course. I'm on course, course. Yes, I'm on uh, course. We are talking about governance. technological innovation. Yeah, no, I'm talking about innovative governance. Innovative yes, government, yes. governance. And then we are looking at the fact that by reason of technology, there is, it has become so much possible to push lies into the, into the, into the, into the air. All right, because everybody carries a phone, so it's a technological innovation. Everybody, uh, they, they are pushing lies. Now, how do you begin to claim a refinery that you have no input in whatsoever? How do you begin to claim ownership of it? That's a part. That's the part of the technological innovation that they talk, talk about. Now, now they also talk about um, uh, because I, I want to I want to address the issues. I don't want to be talking in the air. We we're talking about technological uh, uh, innovative governance. This is what we're talking about. A government that says it has, go, it has um, employed 157,000 Edo people. How? Or, or they, they, they give you data. What, where's the data? The data is from the technological innovation of, of, of people who attended conference. They give you the figures of people who attended conference, people who attended seminar. They took their phone numbers, they took their addresses, and they give you now the people who they have given jobs to. That's technological advancement in governance that they have now that they have now brought into uh, in, as as an innovation. Now, now we are telling people that don't be fooled by these scams. These are scams. There are no jobs anywhere. And don't put, don't have jobs. And don't pull are hungry. During the COVID nineteen, when other governments were giving out palliatives, what did this government do? Obaseki went to Obaseki went to Obasanjo Hospital, and he was alarmed. He said, "Wow, he never knew that the uh, Edo State had this kind of facility." So, in three and a half years that that man was governor, has been governor for Edo State, he has not. He doesn't know about that facility. All right, now he's claiming that he has built one new facility uh, that is a world class facility in Stella Obasanjo. Go and find out what's going on there. See, because we must not lose sight of the things that government claims to be doing. All right, and then we find that. In reality, no such thing does exist. There's no gains of innovation in government. That's the point. No gains. All right, no let, gains. let me no get gains. Prof here. Uh, prof here. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? To what extent uh, has the present administration uh, brought innovation to governance? And are there gains? In no, that? no, no. Let me start from the question you asked. Yes. Um, a lot of people are angry with him simply because the collection of the revenue of uh, those states has shifted from non state actors to the state actor itself and that is driven by technology somebody came on air a non-state actor i was told came on air and boasted that he has made this one billion naira mark and from collecting what taxes of the people this same government has said no this is the way we're going to collect these taxes through the use of technology from the internal revenue service and today, the results are very obvious. They are clear. And from the resources, you have been able to pay arrears of billions of pension funds. You have been able to pay worker salary steadily, monthly, on a fixed state without fail. That is one example of good governance driven by technology. A second example for it, you know, a second example is. You cannot pursue good governance and reforms without looking at the various arms of government. Is it the executive? When you talk of the executive, it's not government house. It's the civil service. Is it the judiciary? Is it the legislative arm of government? And so what kind of institutional reforms do you want to advance there? First, look at government. It has been able to build, for example, a training institute for civil service. I think it's named after a former governor or so, Chief Oyedige Oyegun. It's fantastic. It didn't exist before. From there, civil servants will be trained on how to apply technology and data-driven innovations to good governance. Now, these are started from different perspectives. Number one, 
was the ado best. How do we introduce what is called learning management systems in education? The governor did not start from the university level. It started from the basics. That is why it is called the basic education sector transformation. From school, primary school. Of course, it's going to move from there to junior secondary school. From there to SSS. Once you have the basics, today, teachers are happy. Students are happy. They are learning with technology. Then, of course, you have the Edo Innovative Hub, Productive Center. You have, uh, again, what is known as Edo Jobs. There is the Edo GIS, you know, the Geographical Information System. All of this is driven by technology. It's good governance. You see, it's not for I, what, what I admire in people is to say the truth, admit it, and applaud it. It's not to say this is the truth, it's not the truth, therefore the person who has done it has done wrong and he will be crucified, and if he's crucified, he must die. That is, you see, let us begin to appreciate that a Edo state cannot be backward when it comes to technology. Edo is the heartbeat of Nigeria. Other governors are sending people to Edo state now to come and learn about Edo best, Edo jobs, Edo gist. And that is what we're happy about. Okay. Uh, uh, Pastor Collins, um, yeah. are you saying these things that he just highlighted, they are not in existence as are, relates to innovative all, technology? They are, they are phantom. I thank God that the uh, prophet is a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God he's a lecturer. He lectures in Unibet, but you should go and ask his counterparts in Ampusali University. He said the lecturers, the teachers are paid promptly. You should go and ask his, lady, his counterparts in, in Ampusali University. They have been obtaining their salaries on loan three months now. They don't have money to pay salaries. How do you substantiate this? I'm telling you, go there and find out. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on record now. Go there, go and call any of the lecturers. Let them ask, ask them. Ask if the VC will tell you the truth. Ask him how he has been paying lecturers. The, the man, Obaseke, went to Ekoma. The other day, he was supposed to visit the Abu Sali University. He tactfully dodged, him, dodged that place. He didn't go there because the students and the lecturers were, were waiting for him. He didn't go. Now, now let me talk about this Edo best that Prof just talked about. Yes. Edo best is calm. How do you talk about Edo best where you have a, 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 a situation where it's a one principal, one teacher per school? Edo best. One principal, one lecturer. One, one teacher teaches geography, history, biography, uh, uh, biology. One teacher in school. When you are talking about Edo best that Lagos State has come to emulate, uh, uh, Kwara State, even international community has come to emulate, there are scams. You put this thing on paper and they don't exist on ground. You say Edo, Edo Gis, what's Edo Gis? Edo the, the Geographical, uh, what, what's the meaning of that? Edo Geographical Information System. Yeah, so what's the meaning of that? So there's now, you now have, uh, you now have what? Uh, what's it called? Uh, GPS. Or in a just state that so you can you can vote. So what is it? We are looking at all of these things are just camps. A do gist, a do best, a do job. Where is the job? Pastor. Okay. No, no, just hold on, just hold on, Pastor. A do gist, a do best, a do job. They are all scams. Where are the jobs? One hundred and fifty seven thousand. Who are the people who have the jobs? Please show me show me twenty people who got jobs. Is if not this recent um, SSA, 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 SSA letter that are giving to people now to get because of, of election. The job that will be taken from them in the next month. The job will be taken from the next month. So, SSA, SSA, SSA. Let's even talk about security, sir. I'm interested in security. Okay, we'll get, we'll get to that point. But let me, let me get into react to some of the issues that you raised here. Yeah. Because yes. you asked some questions concerning Edo Gist, Edo Job. Uh, prof so, what is the prof talked yes. about it already? Yes, yes. Prof, yes. prof oh. elaborated on Yes, but there were some things you raised up. Edo, Edo wanted, Best. Yes. And I'm telling you that he did not tell us yes. that Edo Best also means that it is one school, one principal, one teacher. You should dispute that. All right, Prof, let's, let's, let's hear your thoughts. Well, yeah. I'm not part of government. Yes. And uh, I cannot claim to be part of government. Of course, you're not. Neither am I an insider to government. Yes. But all I know about governance is what I read in the media. The mainstream media lies, and of course, lies. The, no, Pastor Collins, just be calm. Okay. Yeah. The yes. mainstream media and the social media. Okay. That is what I read about. So from there, I form my opinion about those in government. That is where I've been able to get the information through my own personal critical analysis to understand what governance is all about. Okay. So uh, the issue of Abuzali that he mentioned, 
I hope he's aware that you and Brazali has specific funding they were due, due from the state government. 250 million. Oh, it's it's just, 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 just be million. calm. Let's take it one at a time. No, no, hold on, hold on. Start, you, you, did, you didn't explain that. that. That's what he has. He's on, on the floor now. He's on the floor. Now they are giving 90, something million. Can you be calm? That's to explain how now you're you Please be calm. Could you please be calm? Okay. Yes. There's specific funding from the government to the university. And there is also that kind of subscription. You know, it's supported by the fees that students pay. Unfortunately, there's a lockdown yeah. arising from this coronavirus pandemic. And so students are not to campus. The fees have not been able to come in. So if there's any problem arising from it, it's not peculiar to Edo State University. Universities in the UK, even the US in Europe, are facing challenges because of this COVID-19 pandemic yeah. and the lockdown itself. So it's not peculiar to uh, Edo State University. Secondly, I, would, I just want to appeal to uh, Pastor, my very good friend. <laughs> we, we went to the same school. I hope you know that. I know, yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah, I know. <laughs> to the same secondary school. Okay, I know. And, uh, I knew him when he was in school. In school. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I think as a pastor, uh, we should be guided by the scriptures. Okay. And part of what the scripture says, we will know the truth, and the truth will set everyone free. Absolutely. Uh, if you are out of air and you are discussing with some other persons, then you can do it the other way. But you are air, sir. Yes, sir. So I appreciate that uh, we should uh, face the truth and deal yes, with the truth. We are speaking the truth. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, so we, we refuse to peddle lies. Okay, but truth, truth is relative. We refuse yeah. to peddle so, lies. Yes, yes. So, so, so let's, I mean, yes. let's understand that, that yes. truth is relative. Okay, Prof, let's, let's mm. get you to continue and anchor the points on Edo, Edo Best and the other things that you talked about as it relates to Edo 2020. What is what is our assessment of public perception of these innovations, Prof? The first thing you would have done is to bring the students and the teachers to the studio <laughs> and talk to them. They are the ones that will give you an accurate perspective of their own experience. experience. Yes. That would have been wonderful. But there will be nobody to bring okay. from that project. No okay. person like that okay. to bring. Just, just another person. Yes. You see, at times I interact. My younger sister is a teacher. And each time I call her phone, she said, she called me daddy, say daddy, I'm busy on my phone, I'm teaching with my, with my phone. I have neighbors whose children hang around particular hours of the day, learning with their uh, telephone, their Android phones, with their teacher coordinating them. You see, that is what is called learning management system in this digital age that is driven by technology. And, and the governor has introduced that. For the past three years, we are seeing the results, and we are saying it does not exist. Now, a critical sector in governance is the social sector. In other words, how is government dealing with education? How is government dealing with health care? How is government dealing with housing? How is government dealing with lands, so on and so forth? And so, the government look at it and say, look, the way people move around with land matters and get stranded. Let government intervene. So let us introduce a geographical information system where you can process your C of O, your secret of occupancy, without stress. And this thing is documented. If you apply, it takes a specific period and you get it without sweat, unlike in the past, where you have to go and queue at secretarial building and wait endlessly for your C of O. But now it's not so. It's directly captured by government's uh, database, and from there, everything, there's an assessment from which your CFO is offered to you. This has made that sector, you know, very easy. Look at the Edo uh, production hub. Whether it is at the one at uh, TV Road, the one at Sapley Road, you can see that new skills have been trained to handle local production. And the essence of that, in the view of this government that I have read, because I'm not part of government, is that government is interested in introducing local, large, sustainable economy mm -hmm. for those states. And that is prosperity for the people. 
but we are not in a, we are we are not patient to understand what government is doing. So that's a critical can I, can aspect. I just, um, can I just make a comment? Please? Okay, oh, that's a critical I, aspect. Yeah, that well, I let, think, let him land. A critical aspect that I think is innovative in governance. You see, people resist change. I must confess to you. Mm. So change that is coming now is being resisted, but they will see it years to come that they made a very big mistake by resisting change. Okay, Pastor okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Prof yeah. talked about the fact that, um, you know, I mean, uh, creating local jobs and, and, uh, and all of that. I, and I, and I, 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 I laugh when I hear that. During uh, Allah uh, uh, the last meeting, the person who supplied food, 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 brought the food from Lagos. The food even went bad. Because there are no local cooks in, uh, in Benin. Pascal, you tasted the food. <laughs> that is a question. People who, you tasted people the food. Who tasted the food. <laughs> told me the food went bad. So you relied on third party information. But well, I mean, sometimes okay. you do that okay. as well. If you right. were not there. Okay. I'm telling you something now that you were not there. You have to, you have to believe. Now, now, people who tasted the food told me the food went He brought in cooks. So far, what people are complaining about in the dossier is that this man relies on people from Delta State. If our Okowa has gone to occupy one place in, in, in those state now, saying that he will make sure that uh, uh, those people vote for for Obasanjo. Now he, he relies on both from Rivers and from Lagos, Delta, Rivers, and Lagos. That's the triangle that Obasanjo operates from. Not those people. Tell me one those person that has given has given contract to no. He invites them from Lagos. He invites them from Rivers. He invites them from Delta. All right, those are where these, those are the places where he has friends. So he's saying that he has created jobs. Now he talked about the social um, sector, circle, where you have to look at the health sector. Obaseki promised to create one health center per ward, one health center per ward in three and uh, three years and ten months. Please name one ward, one, one. I didn't say ten, sir. One ward where Obaseki has created a health center. None, not one. So all of these things are they are on paper. They're on paper. A prof is a, is a scholar. So he looks at papers and he's convinced. But we look at what's on ground. I'm a pastor, I look at what's on ground. Alright, prof looks at papers as, as a scholar. Mm. So he's convinced that oh the man is doing very well. But on ground there's nothing. The man promised that he will create uh, jobs. There are no jobs. He promised to create um, uh, health centers. There are no health centers. None anywhere. You won't find any anywhere. All right. There is, okay. There is a key. Okay. Let, so let me just let me just take a pause. Uh, it's the TMI Monday with your sincerely Sonny Duke Okosun. Uh, we we'll have our call line there. We also have a WhatsApp number. But for now, we're dealing with the WhatsApp number. You have a comment, a contribution to make. Please just send your WhatsApp message to the number on the screen right now. And we'll take a minute break. We'll be back to continue. Our discussions on Edo 2020, innovative governance and meeting the challenges of a modern era. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Many thanks again for rejoining us on the program TMI Monday as we conclude the discussion on innovative governance and meeting the challenges of our modern era as a major talking point in Edo State governorship election. Our panelist, Professor Benson Sadolo, a lecturer and a public affairs commentator, and of course, uh, Pastor Collins Okonofwa, also a political analyst. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us on the program this beautiful thank Monday you. morning. Thank you so much. So now, going forward, uh, how will all of these issues that we've highlighted today 
shape Edo 2020. Let me let me come to uh, uh, Professor Benson Osadolo. Yes. You see, uh, the starting point is the kind of perception mm. of Obaseki's opponents about him. At first, they claimed he had no manifesto. And I discovered, and I can send it to you right away, that he had APC 2016 manifesto titled The Road to Prosperity. Let us go further. He stopped there. I read the manifesto. And if you, have, if you read that manifesto, that's why I'm shocked. All that he said he was going to do for the first four years, then that manifesto, beginning from civil service reforms, through education and so on and so forth, up to the transport sector, they are there. Yet, his opponents at the other end, who were together with him, did not even see that manifesto. They didn't even realize that he had a manifesto. Yet, it was an APC manifesto. It's available, it's here. I can, but it's not right here now, but I can forward it to you. I can forward it to Pastor Chris. Okay. A Pastor second, Collins, you mean? Sorry. Uh, Pastor Collins. Yes. A second aspect is looking at Edo 2020. How have the candidates approached the election? By political participation, no candidate or political party is expected to approach an election without a manifesto. I hope you have is clear. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a policy document that shows your intentions, your aims, your objectives, and what you want to do with governance. So in which case, you know we have two main political parties. Yeah. The People's Democratic Party, with His Excellency Governor Godwin as a candidate. We have the APC, with Pastor Osage Izeyamu as his candidate. We have other political parties. For example, what amazes me is what, what maybe Pastor Collins we talk about here. We have Labour Party, we have Zenet Labour Party. Labour. <laughs> just, just go on, Prof. Go on, Prof. Yeah. We have Africa Democratic Party. Yeah. We have Africa Democratic Party. Fourteen Congress. of them all together. Yes. Yeah. So I find it difficult. Apart from these two big political parties, I, I think uh, Dr. Isaiah Osifu is a political party. Candidate. party yeah. Yes. Have, he, he, is, he didn't come out with his own manifesto, but he is uh, advancing the manifesto of the Labour Party as a national political party, which is excellent for him, and, and, and I admire him for that. But for the, for the other two main political contenders for the office of the governor of a state, states, one is the simple agenda. In other words, he wants to look at security and social welfare infrastructure and urban, urban uh, re renewal, uh, manpower development and training, uh, public-private partnership, leadership by example, and empowerment to job creation. That's what he wants to look at. In other words, for him, and he has said it, that his commitment is for four years. And he will be able to achieve what he wants to achieve in this simple agenda for four years. And I admire him for that. And I respect him for that. But his opponent, another contender, has the mega manifesto. <laughs> what is mega is not simple. It's large. This is somebody who is not just, this is a governor, who is not just thinking of today. In that mega manifesto, he has a vision. He has the mission. There's the mega agenda that incorporates 12 sectors. Beyond that, there is the mega uh, plan. In other words, after four years, where will Edo State be in the next 30 years? In other words, for him, in that, if you have read the, that document, there is the Project 2050. He starts now. He knows that he's not going to accomplish all that he plans to do in the next four years. Okay. But in the next 30 years, where will Edo State be? And then, of course, there is the mega movement. The people themselves, yeah. that is the core of his own governance attitude. Okay. The people, as far as it's concerned, it's the people. Now, from this thinking, from what I read in the Mega Manifesto, the governor has six key pillars to drive his projects, to drive his programs, to drive his governance. Number one is governance reforms. 
So when we're talking about governance reforms, he knows that between now and the next four years, this is what he intends to do and accomplish. And thereafter, a foundation is laid for successive governments okay. for the next 30 years. Okay. The second one is the citizen-centric governance. In other words, the people are the center of his governance. The people. The third one has to do, of course, it's a, it's a pillar of what I studied, is government as an enabler. In other words, there's no way in the world government creates 99 percent of the jobs. Absolutely. There's no way in the world government will employ 99 percent of the people in the state okay. or society. Okay. But government becomes an enabler by its own legal agenda to create jobs. In other words, provide the critical infrastructure in society that creates the jobs. So, so mega, so mega manifesto is, is mega for manifesto today for tomorrow and for the future. That's for the future. Just, okay. Exactly. All right, let me pursue there. May let me pursue there. Yes. I just say that. Yes. Um, for me, I'm a man that has his ears on the streets. All right. This is the first time. And I believe that this mega manifesto is a dream of, with all due respect, Professor, <laughs> because, 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 I can't what did he write it? He said he wrote it. He wrote it. He wrote it in his in his heart. Because this project certainly does not belong to Obaseki. Obaseki does not even know about what uh, what Prof is talking about. That's I not, can that's, assure you. That's not true. I can assure you. They be campaigning with that. Pastor uh, Collins, they be campaigning with that. Yeah, they mega manipulation. He even told you. He yes. even told you that APC people, yes, who or belong where Obaseki belong to. Before did not know about in, in 2016. No, they did 2016. Not, they did not know. That's why they say I don't. We have no manifesto. That's because they did because, not. Be, no, they are ignorant. There was no. How can people they belong to the same party who are supposed to drive a manifesto? Mm. They didn't know about it. Who will drive it? Who will drive it? The man alone. So the people who belong to the party that it belongs, they did not know about it. Who is there anybody now, toddler or adult, who does not have a simple agenda? Even. PD people, no, he's not. A, do not hear him analyzing simple agenda now. Can I analyze this one that he's talking about? Just a beggar. I don't know about it. Everybody knows about simple agenda. You know where Pastor Sage is going. You know what he intends to do. It's a smart project. All right? It's, it's already defined. All right? Obaseki does not have any manifesto. He has none. The one that Prof. A scholar just enumerated now is his own dream. The dream of improv <laughs> for the Edo people, but unfortunately, it's not Obaseki on the ballot. has Obaseki mega manifesto, Obaseki which they are using to complain. Manifesto. Yes, you can't say, hold on. Never had. No, Pastor Colin, hold on. You cannot say, it's hold on, just a in moment. In just, just a moment, just a moment. In 2016. Please. Just a moment, please. Just a moment. You can't say Obaseki does not have a manifesto when in the public domain, there is what they call, the, what the party calls the mega manifesto hold on and then the way. apc says the simple agenda with pastor sage is there i think that should be established no, yes no, okay we let's, need to establish let's, that. let's yes. back up a little so when prof talks about the fact that there was this manifesto because no uh, candidate no, can it, come into APC election 2016 manifesto. yes apc yes. 2016 manifesto mm. there was no such document okay it, 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 there it, was it, no it, such document it is the it, only it is. thing that the body the, he said that there was no such document or you were not aware there was such a document. Aware. am yes. i not a, am i not a player in this in the in the, in the, in the this. well how you're, you're not a member of apc uh, you're not a member of apc no but he's not a member of apc now but he's aware he knows he's aware he didn't say he's not aware he didn't say he's not aware excuse me but he knows about the simple agenda of course because it's in the public because he's interested the, public the domain. same thing is I'm also interested manifested. okay i'm also interested if obaseki if apc in 2016 had a workable document that they called a the manifesto i would have known about it like everybody today knows about the simple agenda of pastor sagi isamu everybody knows about it he just told you about it even in a way that i may not be able to tell you because it's analyzed in fact it's even in pigeon right now it's a pigeon edition of the um, simple agenda right now. So everybody can understand it. Everybody can run along with it. Everybody can, you know, uh, timetable the government along with that, with, that, with that agenda. In six months, this is what he intends to do. In, in one year, this is what he intends to do. In every sector, all right? He will not be the one who will be collecting 650 million per month, uh, allegedly on, on uh, a security vote and be giving police 5 million naira a month, the police that is statutorily mandated to provide security, they get 5 million naira 
Okay, uh, so the Duke, I want to ask you a question. Exactly. So the police told you this? No, no, we didn't. We know this. All right, no. all right. Sorry, you know you, this. They gave, let, me, uh, let me ask a final question. Five million. Million. I need to conclude this. Yes, yes. Let me just, ask a just, final don't get the question. Don't okay, get the question. Okay, Prof. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, one reason I respect ministers of God is that... No, uh, listen, no, no, listen. Prof, 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 hold on. I don't want to take you on this. I don't want to take this person Listen, Prof, hold on. I will not... Prof, hold on. Prof. Let's, let's say call me personally. I have my right to express my views. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, right hold on, hold on just hold on. Prof, I don't want to make this personal. Let's just focus on the issues. No, it yes. is the issue of security votes. Yes, yes. How did he have access to the funds? So how do how will I not have access to it? Uh -huh. How will I not so have access to it? I mean, somebody... this is a this is public money. How will can I we, can know? we take it one do at not, a time? Do you not know? Can we take do, it one do, at a time? Do, do, is it not public? Mr. Collins, it's not can, we, public can we take it one at a time? How much the governor yes, gets? Prof, prof, let me, let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Yes, you wanted to say something. Yeah. Uh, what I want to say is this. Yes. Um, this election, you know, we've seen a lot of propaganda, blackmail, and lies. The thought is the other way, that you begin to feel whether or not we are not in a decent society in those states. If you read certain things on the social, in the social media, you'll be worried what people write about others. Even the adverts on ITV, you'll be wondering what, why such adverts should come off for campaigns. Mm. I think we should go beyond all of that and look at the future of a do state. Okay. That is more critical to all of us. Okay. The simple agenda may be simple, but governance is not simple. That's the truth. It can be simplified, and that's what. Okay. Go, well, that's what right. let, 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 let me get a final word from you. Let me. Let, yeah, yeah, I, I, the, uh, the question I wanted. The question I wanted to ask is, from what we have said, what are the key uh, templates that will uh, determine the outcome of a do 2020? We're looking, the final one. But we're looking at. Um, the presentation of or, or the, the dealing with the issues we are not dealing with we're not dealing with mundane things we are dealing with issues the issues that affect the people okay the just, just avoid hitting the table because of okay, the noise sorry, that okay. the, yeah. the jobs yeah the jobs the the health the health of the people the the provision of jobs all right the um, um, uh, provision of um, health care facilities all right, and, and, and amenities for the people, okay. which the APC candidate, Pastor Sagi Zayamu, has promised to provide. And he has given a timetable, you know, in which these amenities will be provided in such a way as they will not become phantom projects or audio projects such as we have been seeing uh, in the past three and a half years or so. All these phantom and audio projects. Pastor Sagi Zayamu has told you that these are the things he intends to do, and this is within the time frame um, that these projects will be put, in, put on ground. Okay. And we are believing that the people have received our message. We are believing that they will vote massively um, for Pastor Sage Zemu and the APC in the coming election you on see, the 19th uh, of September. Yes, uh, Prof. One way in which I feel disturbed about the way APC is going about their campaign is that um, even recently, yesterday, they created a Facebook page with the picture of a vice chancellor backing their candidates. So this kind of intimidation of people to assume that they are you are going to twist their hands and they vote for you is wrong. It's wrong. That could even be a, a, a no, 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 no. Just so that I can imagine what he didn't interject. He didn't interject. Let him let him establish the point. Yeah. And so. We sit down and, and think and reflect. You have heard in this election, the DSS has invited the tigers and the lions <laughs> for questioning over plan violence and bloodshed in the election. And the people will not fold their hands and wait for their children to be slaughtered because of somebody's political interest. For everybody, let us play it calmly. Okay. Calmly, in the sense that these two main contenders, they are Edo citizens. Therefore, give them the opportunity to, to give their best in Edo state. Once they are done, they will leave the stage. Obaseki is here now, and he says, this is his program. And you are saying, it's not his program. OK, all right. Thank you, So Prof. we thank need you. to understand him. Thank you, thank you Prof. Me aspiring to be governor. Good morning. Why is APC party members always coming on air to castigate Obaseki, knowingly fully well that all they're saying about him was what he did when he was in APC. 
this UFA from a Kenwa Road. Nelson from Benin, please, Obasike should tell other people at the world level what he has done, not what he wants to do, because he has been there for almost four years. If we cannot see any louder projects on the ground now, we have nothing to expect in his second term, especially being with PDP that we know their history. Well, that's the much time will permit us to take. We'll take a short break and I'll be back with the rest of our discussion on TMI Monday. Stay with us as we look at allegations of uh, recruitment of thugs for Edu 2020. Luke Manakwamoke, who is uh, popular with his uh, 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 harmless um, uh, rabbit, okay, <laughs> he's here in the studio. Uh, Isaac Rabo is also here in the studio. We'll be back with them in a moment. Please don't go away.